Dance Hour. We're back. We're back, guys. Another week. Another week. Uh, it kind of sucked last week. You kicked me off. You're like, get, you, I said, like, get, get out. out. Yeah, because we run hot and cold. Yeah. We're sort of like Ross and Rachel. Yeah, yeah. Like when it's steamy, it's steamy. <laughs> You know, yeah. when we have a guest, you're right here. Yeah. You're like on my lap, basically. Yeah. And, and that, that's when we're tight. And then, you know, we just <laughs> then oil and water. Then you're getting my business. You're you're like you're being very extra. And I, and I banish you. I look at your text messages. You look at my you're like, who the fuck is this? Yeah. And I'm like, why do you care? <laughs> but some reason you get very protective. It's just it's you go, just my who's, nature. who's Allie? I go, that's a girl, Allie. Like, uh, it's not even a. I, I sometimes I think you're trying to replace me with another Ali. But I don't know. That I I didn't realize there's an alley. There's multiple, there's, yeah, yeah. There's American Allison, alley. Yes, yeah. yes. But um, but yeah, no. Uh, actually, <laughs> last. No, week, you got you got swamped in work. Yeah. It, so I was still here though, in spirit I, and physically. He was yeah. just like right across the wall. Yeah, I was on the other side of this. Just uh, doing your homework. I was in the other side of the warehouse where the dancers were. Where at. the dancers are. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. How are they? Are they good? <laughs> they're still dancing. <laughs> they're dancing. Yeah, they're good. They're like when can we stop? <laughs> You know, when I tell you, oh, like, well, whenever Fahim tells you, yeah, me, I'm like, look, sometimes I'm... during the podcast, like, because we edit it, yeah, I'll pop in there, I'll be like, you guys still dancing? I don't hear squeaking, yeah, and then they keep on dancing. And then once you hear the the squeaks of the foot, <laughs> the, like that, the best twenty dollars ever spent on Craigslist. Uh, speaking of, uh, what Craigslist? Yeah, Craigslist. I have a. Uh, I put up my mom's car on on Craigslist. What and kind? I get, uh, Toyota 2015 Toyota RAV4. Why didn't you let fans have first dibs? Uh, you know what? Why it, not here before? It's still on the market. It's still on the market. But I'm like coordinating for her from LA mm. and I'm selling it in Virginia. So I'm just like every day it's just a negotiation. I'll give you 13000 for it. I'll give, And I'm just sitting here. Yeah haggling from many states away yeah mm. but um anyway i came here from anaheim dude yeah you had to drive in what was going on hotel see that's that's the world of stand-up now uh, because the clubs are shut down yeah so now all these little like odd shows are sprouting up around town yeah and like i gotta go to these places to do what i normally would just go to the comedy store for or go to yeah. the improv so there was this rooftop show I think Michael Rappaport was supposed to do it. Mm -hmm. He was booked to do it. But then he got some other gig in New York. So then oh, wow. Christina, the girl who books it, uh, it's like by Disneyland. It's this hotel. It's on the roof. It's called The Fifth. Oh, wow. So she's like, hey, Rappaport um, canceled. Can you headline? Can you and like Jamie Kennedy headline? Whoa, whoa, whoa. And I was like, yeah, sure. And this is your it, second show so far with Jamie Kennedy in this. Oh, because the parking lot? Yeah. Well, he's just part of the stand-up scene. Yeah, you know, yeah, I yeah. see him around all the time. Okay. He was like, you know, for us in oh, the man, like, uh, early 2000s, he was a legend. That is pretty crazy, too, to think about. Yeah. To be around for a bit where... I remember watching his show, Jamie Kennedy yeah, Experiment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. great. Yeah. And then he was in Malibu's Most Wanted. Well, even before that, his breakout was Scream. He yes. was in Scream. He yeah, dude. He's a great actor. Scream two. I remember that scene specifically of him in Scream two. Scream two getting sucked in the van. I mean, it's been twenty years. I can spoil yeah, it. You can spoil it. When he's getting like stabbed, I I was like I was like nine ten years old, and I was devastated. Huh. I was like, well, why they have to kill him? He was the the, the cool one, the goofy one. Yeah, you know, yeah, the but, com the comic relief. Yeah, and he was like the you know you. The one you're kind of rooting for that just slips by. Yeah, that guy never makes it to the end. The guy you're rooting for. Yeah. It's always like the square jawed guy in the hot chick, like, whoa. I'm glad we made it out of this. <sighs> and all the funny people are just like fucking Wes Anderson. Pole, like, no, not Wes Anderson. Wes Craven. Oh, Wes Craven. Craven. How yeah. crazy that that movie mm -hmm. spawned like a like a whole generation of masks yeah right that's like it's like mike culture. myers like it's so hard to do a halloween movie that has that kind of impact where it's in halloween stores all the time yeah right like and i think scream is like maybe one of the last ones i think so iconic it, masks. yeah because they're very simple masks there's something because the mike myers mask and the scream mask are masks that they're like one's a hockey mask and one's just like a ghoul mm -hmm. a, like mute like adjusted or whatever yeah. uh, warped a warped ghoul face or whatever and it it's nothing. There's no need for any kind of like special effects, no color. It's, it's just, just simple, creepy. It's black and white. Yeah, you know, and it does the job. Yeah. So, oh yeah. So Jamie Kennedy did that show, and then also I did this one show before quarantine hit, maybe like a month before, 
Jay Davis was doing this show at the Roosevelt. So they have this cool little performance uh, space there. The Hollywood Roosevelt? Okay, yeah. Okay. Is there another one? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you ask that question? Well, you maybe. Go, the Hollywood one? <laughs> Is there another one? I don't know. Maybe there might be a it's like I'm from Seattle. comedian. I'm from Seattle. <laughs> Washington? <laughs> Is there another Seattle? Is there another? Seattle, case there was. Seattle, Iowa. You never know. There could be like... If I say Springfield, there's a million Springfields. Yeah. But the Roosevelt, I don't know. I guess. But these are different things. Okay. So, anyway. <laughs> so there was, I like how you're just like trying to justify. Look, I, you're not going to shame me for asking. <laughs> it's very Trump of you, though. Just like not take ownership of it and just be like. I said it. Yeah. I doubled down. Just never say sorry or you did anything wrong. No. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I was doing the show at the Roosevelt, and then Tom Green was on it. Oh, shit. And, like, he's a guy I'll see in the comedy scene, too. But, yeah. like, dude, I remember it's, I forget who had this quote, or it's just sort of the common knowledge that the people you idolized growing up, they are famous to you forever. Yeah. Just because those are very formative years. Yeah, yeah. So. It's those people that were on TV. When you were in high school. Yeah. Or you were in junior high, like. It's just set in stone. Yeah, like they are celebrities. They are famous. celebrities. Yeah, because yeah, you're just eating fruit roll-ups and, yeah. and seeing this. It's such a bigger impact than if you see someone famous now with like an adult brain. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it was, it was kind of a trip. I'm like, oh, fuck, man. I remember watching Tom Green and I was loving that show. And yeah. I've also had this thought, too, when it comes to back in the day, Tom Green was the only one who had license to be an asshole. He had a TV show. That was his shtick. Yeah. But now everyone has one of these. Everyone yeah. has TikTok and Instagram. Yeah. Everyone wants, wants to be TikTok famous and Instagram famous. So every motherfucker is Tom Green in public. It's like Agent Smith. Just anyone who's 12 is being an asshole in Target yeah. and just filming it, hoping to get some likes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The world was cool with one Tom Green. Like you had to earn yeah. being an asshole. Now it's like everyone. Everyone. Yeah. So the show was great. Actually, of all these quarantine shows I've done. Yeah. This, this is this is the best one. Rooftop. The best I mean, the other best one I did was Grand Central oh, in yeah, downtown. Yeah. yeah. I heard that just got shut down. What? I guess it wasn't playing by the rules or oh, it seemed like they were. They were doing everything very I think LA is just being too anal and bureaucratic. It makes no sense. The tables were very spaced out. Yeah. The mics were wiped down. Um, everyone was wearing masks. It was socially distant. Yeah. And they still shut it. It was on the rooftop. It was on the very, very top level of the roof. Yeah. And they still shut it down. That's odd. So I'm having to go to like OC and. Or yeah, out of this LA County. Yeah. I think I'm doing San Diego this weekend. I'm doing okay. American Comedy Company doing Friday and Saturday. That's right. That's right. I sent it to. Oh, uh, it will have already been done by the time this, this airs. airs so. Yeah. I told, I, I messaged uh, my friends in San Diego. I was like, you guys better go. Like, I have law school midterms. And I'm like, what's that going to do for them? Yeah, what the fuck? You're not going to remember that. You're going to remember gonna, yeah. laughing. You have a show coming up in uh, Arizona. Oh, yeah, Phoenix. Phoenix. I message so. other people. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You're my street team. Dude. Yeah, I'm like, look, if, you know, local, check them out. Check them out, you know? Yeah, man. That's a cool club. I've done it before. Um, what is it? Uh, House of Comedy. Okay. In, in Arizona, Phoenix. In Phoenix. Yeah. Yeah. So that's going to be limited capacity. So now that you're doing these shows, do people come up to you? Are you like, are you open for people to be like, hey, we like the set? Or are you like, I'm a little 50 50. Like last night we were on a rooftop. We, everyone was wearing masks. So I, I kind of, I took pictures yeah. from a, like, you know, it yeah. wasn't like, oh. yeah, yeah. No yeah, more like yeah, hugs yeah. after the show. Yeah. Yeah. Or handshakes. Or handshakes. So it's just sort of like maybe shoulder to shoulder. And yeah. But it was outside, so I felt more comfortable doing it. Yeah, yeah. Indoors, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. And you have another show there tonight? What, in Anaheim? Yeah. No, nah, that oh, was, was just, just a one, one and done. Okay. But what was cool is, because it's part of the hotel, they, um, they're like, oh, you have a room. Hey. And it's in Anaheim, and I'm in Tarzana. So it's, I was just, it's kind of fun to just do a show and just be like, I'm going to crash, and then drive up and do the pod the next day. Staycation? A little staycation. Yeah. Yeah, let fun. me just stay in a hotel next to Disneyland. Yeah. It's dead, dude. That, oh. that whole block, it's dead. Well, yeah. Because, like, Disneyland's closed. We used to have a method when I first moved to L.A. Oh, the wristband thing? Yeah, my friends and I, because they all lived in Orange County in Anaheim, uh, Cerritos. Uh, and I would just be there every other week. We would just be like, let's go to Disney, let's go to Disney, let's go to Disney. And now it's like, it's weird because it wasn't too long ago, but it's still long ago where I'm like, man, that was like 
five, six years ago. Felt like yeah. a lifetime ago, back in my youth, my early 20s, Don't you know? All the time. Yeah. Um, but anyway. You watch the debates? I was about to ask you this. Mm. I mean, by the time this airs, yeah. um, or the, well, the, the whatever debates, you know, that we're talking about is over the- It was the VP, the VP, the VP. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was going to ask you how, like, you know, especially during this time, you personally, how do you like navigate the world of politics? Because I get like there's political comedians whose mm -hmm. whole entire thing, like Hassan Mintenhaj, yeah, is like a political comedian. Yeah. You know, like he does political takes. That's his You thing. know what's great? Uh, I mean, follow up with question, but yeah. just some insight from someone who knows him and has yeah. been his friend for a bit and just doing goat face. Yeah. You get like these people who you just know as established comedians, they settle into whatever their voice is. But it's yeah. really cool to be on this journey with uh, your friends and, and know what they were doing before they kind of found their lane. Yeah. So I remember we would do spots around the Laugh Factory and these places, and and he would do all sorts of stuff. It wasn't super political. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. he might have a little bit, but it was just kind of like everything. Yeah. And then we were doing Goat Face, and we would shoot these sketches. And he would just have these great rants. And Aristotle was really good at this. Like Aristotle was really good at kind of recognizing everyone's superpower. Yeah. And then he was like, Hassan, you got to keep like, these, this is great. Like keep on like nurturing this or watering this plant. And that's how the truth, those yeah, series those that we had. Of Hassan where just, yeah, yeah, where he would just kind of expunge. He would just have a hot take on a, all yeah. these things. And, and a lot of times it would slant political, like the Ashton Kutcher pop, the pop chips, chips thing. Yeah. When he was doing brown face. Yeah. Just really, Jeremy laid, really laid into him. Yeah, yeah. So we'd have these and he started to find that groove and then the one man show. And then like, yeah, once he did that uh, Homecoming King. Yeah. Because he did it as a run on on um, like uh, in like theater, you know, yeah, in yeah. New York. So he was tightening off it up Broadway. off Broadway or something. Yeah. And then that was his lane. Like he found it. Yeah. Yeah. But he wasn't always that, so it was cool to kind of like see him get there. See him get there, yeah. yeah. And that, like, he does that so well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, I'm envious of that. Like, I can't, I can't do that, or yeah. I don't think that way. I think more absurdist, you know. Well, I mean, yeah, that's everyone's strong point too. You know, like he has always, outside of sketch comedy, he was always very still political in a lot of yes, you know, uh, not even just like <clears throat> political in the sense of like politics but in the sense of like passionate yeah social justice uh, social consciousness uh injustice you know like race he very well you know so like i feel like that added into it and i feel like now like as a comedian it's kind of like a, a brand now uh -huh. like that he's a he's seen like classified as a political comedian mm -hmm. and you know i know right now especially in this last four or five years mm -hmm. Trump is for comedians like Trump's like that easy go to, you know, like every like yeah, I can go yeah. to a comedy show yeah. and every comedian going up has one thing about Trump, mm -hmm. you know. So now, especially when it comes around elections, how does how do you navigate this place of politics? Because you're not of you'll make political references, you know, yeah. and sometimes it's just like broad political yeah, yeah. jokes. But you're not like, well, Proposition 8 passed. <laughs> yeah, in, you know? I don't drill down. I'm yeah. not super specific. Yeah. That's just my aesthetic. Um, I do have, sometimes I do have strong opinions about something. And just me personally, uh, my comedic taste, I like going about it that way. And it's not conscious. It's just sort of like the way I am where yeah. um, I like just having random, funny, universal things. Yeah. And then sometimes I can... Um, I can drill down on it and I think it's a little more potent because sometimes you can be so political and that it turns people off. Like yeah. the opposing, like if it's so much left, yeah, it's almost like you're being talked down to or something. Yeah, yeah. So they don't want to receive, whoever like what the audience is, they don't want to receive the info. Yeah. Just because they're already like, that's the different team. Yeah. But if I'm doing a joke about, you know, whatever, a dog or a relationship and just like absurdist, yeah. silly stuff. Yeah. And then I... I mentioned something kind of poignant about being Afghan in America yeah. or racism in America. Yeah. It's it kind of cat. They're already disarmed. Yeah. Cause they're just enjoying themselves. And the message seeps through, I think a little more than if I was like, Start Trump's from the an beginning. idiot yeah. from the jump or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's just sort of like my aesthetic. And yeah. And again, that goes into the comedian itself, the comedians, and I guess maybe the show, because sometimes they're like political comedy shows 
yeah. where it's like the lineup is just political comedians, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and then, and I get that too, because I don't look at every comedian as my political insight, you know, yeah. and some don't have the best insight. So it's not like I'm going to go to a comedy show and be like, all right, this is my daily dose of politics. <laughs> right. Like if I'm going to a comedy show, I'm like, I, and I, and I, you know, I come to yours and I bring friends. I'm like, let's go have a good time. Yeah. Like a, a, a good laugh. And then, you know, there is something to be said about we're just so inundated with politics, especially nowadays. Like, yeah. First of all, that's always there. But nowadays it's, it's just, just heightened. It's, it's yeah. heightened even more. Yeah. So to get more of that at the club, even if it's funny, there is this fatigue. Yeah. Like how much politics can the body take? Yeah. So I think there is some levity in, in just like, I like bringing people together even too, you know, like even if they have opposing yeah. viewpoints, I think it's great that there's a lot to life outside of politics. Yeah. <laughs> it seems so precious. Like everything hangs yeah. on this one issue or yeah. us versus them. But at the end of the day, everyone is human. And also, it's like trying to convince a Yankees fan not to be a Yankees fan. It's just, it's just, we love teams. Yeah. It's that, yeah. Dude, if, if your like parents were super Christian or, and Republican, yeah, you, you'd probably be that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing. It People tend to at a young age, but then it gets frustrating when the older you get and the, not, I mean, not to get... My issue is the more I read, the more I like learn on new theories, political theories, it there is this level of like pretentiousness that I have to like avoid. Because mm -hmm. if I'm hanging out with my friends or my cousins, I'm like, you believe in the carceral system? You believe in, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, and I'm like, oh, this fucking, even though I just read about it like a month ago. Yeah. And I'm like, this, this fucking, can you, you guys don't know? Be, yeah. Can you believe like you've this known guy? your whole life? Yeah. But, and, and like, because when, once you kind of read something, you're like, whoa, this totally makes sense. I got to tell other people about this. But then you don't go in a very, it's very rare for people to genuinely and sincerely try to educate or like drop some knowledge on a friend, you know? Yeah. And it's always very div divisive because even though, you know, I can be with friends with very similar political views. But if something new I come up on and they aren't aware of it, I'm like, you guys are fucking, geez, man, I'm around fucking idiots, you know? And it's, I mean, it's never that extreme, yeah, yeah, but that's yeah. a, a very exaggerated But that's a take. way to never have your message get through. Yeah, and so even when you're saying like when you have a political show and like maybe every comedian is just very, like so much politics, hmm. you get to a point where you're like, yo, how much, you're right, how much politics can we take? The human will take. And I'm, I'd like to, you Some know. Some people can take a lot. <laughs> and I feel like I can take a lot, but even like to me, I'm like, bro, I'm tired. Like, I just want to, watch something mindless yeah you know like i just want to disconnect for a little bit you know and just being just so hyper aware of like every political thing and and i'm only bringing this up because there are the debates twitter's going crazy sure. uh it's nothing like this guy like it's election season mm -hmm. so it's just like everything is just politics you and did, so you watched it or what no no, no. oh really <laughs> I was, so i, I was watched in, the clips yeah yeah man. I was in Anaheim waiting for the show, so I was in my hotel room waiting yeah. to go, waiting to go to the roof. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of a. I've never had that before. Where I'm just chilling in my room. It's like time to go to level five. Yeah, it's just like form. Every one of these up. rooftop like hotel things, you get in the elevator and then you press the top floor, and then the elevator opens behind you, and you're like, ooh, <laughs> <laughs> Men ooh, in black. the doors behind me. <laughs> this is a swanky rooftop. <laughs> I think they do that on purpose, like. We're gonna put the door behind them. Okay. We'll, we'll fucking blow their. As as long as it's not the hey, you have to get to the top floor and then take a second elevator. That's to, the worst. Yeah. When you go to like a Vegas hotel and they're yeah. like, you're in the eleven through three hundred wing, so you got to go here and then go to the Sky Bridge and then go up. Yeah. Yeah. So the debates, I'm watching it, and then, and then like, I'm like, is that a fly on Pence's head? <laughs> it was funny. I'm like, yeah. Is that on my TV? Yeah. Or is that? And I'm like, oh fuck, I think it's really on his head. Yeah. And then it was on there forever. <laughs> I yeah I saw the memes yeah the, the jokes and he has white hair so yeah, oh. it stands out if it was on like Kamala Harris's yeah head, no one would know no, yeah she, what if the next debate Pence dyes his hair black <laughs> he's like I'm on you fly nice try funniest thing then an albino fly lands on his hair and he's like fuck 
you know, the funniest thing that like a gag that these politicians can do the next debate. Kamala brings a like a fly swatter just to like leave it oh on the table God. just to bring it and leave it at the table dude I, you just gave me this thought the easiest comedians are a southwest flight attendant I've done that but you yeah. know and then politicians oh yeah that would be a fucking mic drop if, if Kamala just showed up and gave Pence a fly swatter everyone yeah. would be like ah fuck yeah wow oh, she served him yeah and, yeah and if a comedian th did that they'd be like what are you doing? With this guy's a Quit fucking comedy. Yeah, he's a hack. Yeah, yeah but a like, politician just gives me like, oh, sick burn. Yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> I was watching a, uh, I was watching this like TikTok of like, cause you know the fly thing was happening, and yeah. then they pulled like a clip from Bernie Sanders, and like a bird landed on the podium. Really? There was a lizard on his face, and he had no idea. Like, With my dark spot. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, there's a lizard. Oh. <laughs> But like a bird lands on the podium, well, yeah, cool. But like the arena erupts. Like well, it, a bird is cool as shit. That's like he's the chosen one. That fly is yeah. like Satan is speaking to us. <laughs> yeah, it's just coming out of his eyelids. Yeah, like blood starts coming out of his yeah. eyeballs. And Apparently, something a snake comes out. He's like, and under our tech, <laughs> it starts foaming. Yeah, or... Trump's like, you know, the snake. I mean, he took care of it. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that, that that was a that was a thing that, and then yeah, I mean, it just got, it kills me. Like the jokes can get killed so quick. The fly joke, everyone. everyone's doing it. I yeah. know, even I did it. It's just the thing is, like when you're watching a debate, there are certain events because uh, everything is so segmented nowadays. No one watches anything. Yeah, live events are the only collective like where the world is watching. Yeah, or at yeah. least America. So like, World Cup. Yeah, the Super Bowl. So if you if you have a funny tweet or like a funny tweet or some take on a thing that everyone is watching at the same time, yeah, you can get a lot of momentum very fast. Yeah, it's just this fun thing. It's like a watch party for the world. It is, but it's like how long will this last? How long is this joke gonna go for? You know, long as time. I mean, how often does a fly land on the VP's head that <laughs> that prominently there for forever for like three minutes? <laughs> it was part of the debate. They should have asked the question of the fly. <laughs> a fly, how do you feel about poop? And he's like. <laughs> I love it. I also like toes. <laughs> Where do you stand on foreign policy? Oh man, we need to protect our borders. And everyone's like, "This fly's making a lot of sense." <laughs> like Pence, you're out. Fly, you're in. Yeah, the Trump and fly ticket. <laughs> but I'm just thinking of all the. It seems so petty. Like, okay, a bug landed on his head. Yeah, you have no control over that. That's just something that happens in the world. Yeah. But I'm thinking about all the strategists. Yeah you know backstage and they have the lanyards and it's like all the phones and like okay we're up in the polls blah, 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 blah. oh pence is doing great he's killing it and like, twitter trends what, what the fuck is that <laughs> but is that a fly is that on the tv screen or is that on his head touch the tv tv screen it's fucking on his head this is ruining like, like this is everything oh, like yeah. their life is over over this yeah. fly yeah 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 Someone tell somebody to get out there. There's 300,000 tweets <laughs> trending. Yeah. Gabe, get out there. And they're like, Pence. <laughs> and Pence is like, <laughs> and the fly's still on. The fly's just hanging on to his hair. <laughs> oh. Just a fly landing on their head and, and like, they're down 50 points in the polls. Or I don't know yeah. if that's the number or not, but that just shows you how dumb people are or how the optics of everything. Yeah. You got to be this like, perfect clean cut. Oh, we were doing so great till that fly landed on his head. Now we've got to revamp everything. And that yeah, they're putting fly repellent on his hair every, every debate now. <laughs> My, the craziest thing is, I were mean, you somersaulting in shit pants. What were you doing? <laughs> and we're part of the problem too because this podcast is a week old now from the debate. True. Uh, we like to give the hottest takes a week shit later from a week. Normally we're like within like a day or two of our mm. turnaround time, but you know, I'm, I'm going to be out for the next week or two. So me, I want to get one in the can, but, uh, <laughs> to beat this dead horse of this fly. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know, fuck it. I'm not going to, we're oh, done. Come on. We're done with do the fly. But the grand central station or market. Yeah. Grand central market that you mentioned is closed. And it's funny that they closed and shut that down. And me and you went to Culver City the other night oh, or yeah. the other afternoon. Yeah, popping. Yeah. There's like live music. Yeah. And, and you you made a good point when we were there. That you're like, if I literally just pick up the mic, they, they would like, shut, shut it down. <laughs> yeah. They're fucking. <laughs> but if I'm like, yeah, so uh, the other day, <laughs> whoop, whoop, shut it down. <laughs> it's weird prohibition. Like, yeah. 
it's kind of the lamest prohibition now. Yeah. Back in the day, it would, they would take barrels and put an axe. Yeah, and just... Yeah, now the police come and they just like knock the mic stand <laughs> over with a baton. And just they, snip the cord. Yeah, and then they just like axe the mic stand. They go, shut it down. Yeah. It's over. You know, again, I... I'm arrested. Yeah. I'm, I told a knock-knock joke. <laughs> just introducing yourself. the chicken yourself. the road? Fuck you, pig. <laughs> Mm, a cab. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the boat of like everyone should be home. There should be no live music and comedy. But in the in in the world of like there is live music. Yeah. And they're also banning comedy. Yeah. This is just weird. It doesn't make the logic to me what, doesn't what make I'm, sense. I'm like, I was on the freeway the other day. <laughs> <laughs> and then nothing. They're like their body cam was off. <laughs> He lunged at me with, I thought, what, it was like a knife with like a thing on top of it. He was no, coughing. No, was a microphone. It looked like a knife. He was knifing yeah. and coughing and just spreading. He was lunging. I had this um, early in the like corn, like corona thing in like early mid-January, early February when it was like, oh, we have a few cases. Two cases at USC have popped up. Mm. One case in, you know, I was talking, I uh, had a picture. I, I Googled. Uh, spit in a tube or whatever and I was going to post it on Twitter being like you guys I'm selling this uh, vial of Corona that my friend has Corona and he spit in this vial and I'm willing <laughs> to sell this for 30 bucks if you guys want to infect someone you hate like biochemical warfare oh, <laughs> but then I like sat on this tweet for like a week being like is this funny is this pushing it is this just oh. bad taste do you know how many tweets in my draft folder could end me I'm just like yeah because some of them, like, I know what my intentions are, but yeah. it, I'm like, uh, maybe it's not. I go, let me sit on it and have some perspective. Yeah, I'll look yeah. And I'm like, yeah, it could be misconstrued or I yeah. didn't mean that. It's not worth it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, again, to go, <laughs> this fucking fly, go back to this fly thing. Mm -hmm. A comedian put out a tweet being like, this fly is uh, Mike Pence's only black friend, <laughs> you know? And like, it's exactly, that's sure, the reaction. Sure. But then if you really, like, you're like, wait, like, were you trying to say like black people are flies now? Like, mm. see, obviously that's not what he meant. But when you're drafting jokes now, you have to be like, what is the worst interpretation someone could make of this? Yeah. And then it's not worth it. If it's bad, yeah. you know, like it's just even if it's a reach, you go, yeah. it's fucking not worth it. Yeah. Because what's crazy is you have to be people who don't have a sense of humor people who don't get jokes like your life could be over yeah. over someone not getting the joke yeah yeah like, and, oh that's not what i meant at all you're you're twisting it into this thing that wasn't my intent that's true but anyways uh moving on from that uh this weekend you saved my life you know i did yeah man uh for the viewers who don't know uh i had this huge project you know th oh, yeah. that i was editing i mean i didn't think of that big well of a it, deal, there, but... it was like a, a, a accumulation accumulation why can't i why am i uh, anyways of of things that happened that day i had this huge deadline to meet and i was editing this video and i wake up early like i spent all day friday editing this video saturday morning i wake up i plug in my hard drive to the laptop and it's not showing up and i'm like okay this has happened before maybe the cable's janky all right i replaced the cable plug in the hard drive nothing this happened before too i'm like yeah. maybe it's just my usb port i gotta try another usb port plug it in nothing then the fear starts setting in that like maybe the hard drive has crashed and i'm like no no i can't be i restart the laptop plug it in Oof. and nothing then i'm like oh god this might be real my heart like this client's all my ass I need to meet this deadline to get this video exported. Yeah. So I'm like, oh God, turn to God. <laughs> you know? My first reaction is like, I got to turn to God. So I like, <laughs> you exhaust everything here and then you go, <laughs> yeah. Dear God. <laughs> Literally. So Just, I've tried everything at this level. <laughs> it's time to kick it up. Last resort. Yeah. Dear God. So I please restore my hard drive. Yeah. So you know, I I, I pray to the big man. You know, I I do like two rakats of prayer, and I'm like, plug it in. I'm like, okay, God, the I turn to you. <laughs> yeah. Why? Like that's your the the ultimate Mac genius. Yeah. And I'm like, then I'm like, fuck. Okay, I gotta go to like a data recovery place because I need this ASAP. Yeah. So I'm calling a few places. A few places are closed. This one guy's like, yeah, bring in your hard drive. I'm like, I need this done within the hour. He's like, bro, 
you're out of luck. It doesn't even take like three days of running diagn diagnostics, whatever. You, there's physical damage to your hard drive. You're screwed, bro. And I'm like, okay. And see, this is where I want to ask you if you've been in situations like this where worst case scenario, like shit, everything is going bad. Mm -hmm. For me, I had like maybe like 45 minutes of panic of being like, what the fuck do I do? And then, because this, I mean, my life is always like, just it's a house of cards yeah and every couple months like the whole entire thing <laughs> the whole stack collapses yeah. so there's nothing new to me of being in a situation where like everything's gone to shit for me uh especially in the line of work i do yeah and like showing up like i've driven two hours to a shoot and i get there and i'm like the one cable i'm missing Oof. and that's like the audio and i'm like all right what yeah. do i do now so in this situation i just had to like I luckily had the footage on like memory cards, you know, and I, and I was able to just restart. And then a couple hours in my work, the whole, like it's a heat wave. LA was going like it was a hundred degrees in Koreatown. Power goes out in Koreatown. And I'm like, fuck. Okay. I'm like, I have two hours of charge. Maybe two in two hours, the power will come back on two hours coming up, no power. So then I'm like trying to text all my friends who's in LA. Everyone's out of town. Mm. Or everyone's out at the beach or whatever because yeah. it's a heat wave. So I'm like, oh, Fahim. And you're like, yeah, you can come through. Yeah. I drive 30 minutes, get to your place. Uh, you have air conditioning, lifesaver. Yeah, yeah, man. You know? And uh, on, you, can't, you can't be in the valley with no AC. Yeah, so I, I, uh, I get the work done. But then you had to leave. You, you're like, yeah, I'm going to leave. Yeah, where did I have to go? You oh, I was in the Irvine. I was yeah. in the Irvine show, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're like, all right, I'm going to go be home late tonight. <laughs> I felt, it was cool because like I felt like a dad or something. Like, what? yeah, I'm like, all right, Ali, um, <laughs> there's Topo Chico's in the fridge. <laughs> yeah. If you need anything, I'll be back at this time. Yeah. OK, do you need anything? Or the AC is how it works. Yeah. All right. There's food in the fridge. I'm like my mom. Just like, OK, the eggs are yeah. here. All right. OK, there's there's yogurt here if you want. Yeah. Um, just uh, yeah. Just let me know if you need anything. Yeah. And then so like three hours in, I'm editing. I'm like, oh, man, I'm kind of hungry. So I'm like, all right, I'll. I don't I can't leave because I got still I got work to so I order pizza uh -huh. and I'm working the pizzas here and I'm like oh, well, I, got, I got some time I'm gonna eat this pizza and then I'm like all right I'm gonna oh he has a TV I'm, <laughs> I, I'm sure if he won't mind me watching Netflix <laughs> yeah so I, I get comfortable on the couch I pull out a little coaster you know put out my cup of water and I'm eating this pizza <laughs> and I'm like oh, it's Fahim's apartment's kind of or his townhouse is kind of cold and I'm like oh there's a little blanket <laughs> so i'm like putting the blanket on i'm eating this pizza i'm watching netflix and then i'm like and the, you know I, i'm kind of done with food i'm just like and then i export the video so i have like an hour to wait till this video is exporting and i'm like and now it's like midnight like 12 30 and i'm like oh, man i'm getting kind of tired here I'm like my eyes are going and then the thought creeps in my head i'm like what if i didn't fall asleep on this couch fine and, which i was like it'd be yeah, fine yeah, if yeah. you you'd just be for me it'd be just an awkward experience to like be asleep and then the door opens and i'm like it's gonna be one of those things where i'm like where the fuck am i because like <laughs> oh, yeah you, you yeah, know yeah. and i you don't plan on waking up that way yeah or like in someone's living room i've done that before where like i'm doing a gig somewhere and i wake up and the room's unfamiliar and yeah then i'm like oh yeah i'm on the road or yeah yeah oh yeah i'm in this town have you ever fallen asleep like in the back green room or something no, I'm not on like a couch. That. Okay. No. I want to try this as a bit like the best thing in the world is falling asleep on a couch because it's unexpected. Mm. There's a romance to it. I think it's kind of like how girls view relationships <laughs> or like making out yeah. or like hooking up with someone. Like it just happened. They love the romance of it not being premeditated. And the spontaneity. And the spontaneity. Yeah. When you go to bed at night, you like brush your teeth, you put your you pajamas yeah. on, you're like, all right, time to sleep. Yeah. There's nothing romantic about that. Yeah. But just watching Netflix and then, you know, yeah. one show led to another and then you just like it's go. tomorrow. You let go. It's romantic. It's romantic as shit. Yeah. That's the best. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The sleep when you don't expect it. I love that. Yeah. It may not be as nice as a bed, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. Because. You had no control over it. Yeah. And it did the job. You were unconscious. Like you were awake and then you were unconscious. Yeah. There was no like purgatory until you slept. Yeah. No thoughts. Nothing. No thoughts. Nothing. Yeah. Just 
Yeah. Yeah. From entertainment to tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best sensation. I, I agree. Yeah. A part of me was like, maybe I should go up in his room. Yeah, we were joking. It would be yeah. so funny. Like I come home from the show I'm and I'm your, like, Ali? You're and he's not there. I'm like, oh, I guess he went home. And then and then I like go up to my room. <laughs> I brush my teeth and then I like lift the covers and then you're there in pajamas with like the sleeping hat. <laughs> a little the nightcap. Ball. Yeah, you go, oh, you're back. <laughs> And then you you don't even leave. I just sleep <laughs> yeah. with you. Is it cool if I spend the night? You could take the right side. Yeah. I'll take the left side. But you could have. I, I mean, that's bad on me. I didn't know you would go that long. I, I have a guest room. You yeah. should have. I factor that room. in, and I was like, okay, I was a bad Afghan host, dude. No, I'm no, sorry, I dude. factored it in because I was like, me and you have. A, we're going to record. A, I was like, in my head, I was like, we're going to record a podcast tomorrow. I could just stay, work, take his extra bed, spare bedroom. And then tomorrow we go to the podcast. But then I was like, well, nah. I was like, mm -hmm. at that point, I was like, my, you know, I'm just like, going to. We could, have, we could split a milkshake <laughs> yeah. and then we could ride a tandem ba yeah. bicycle to the I, podcast. I could just bring my stuff in here and, you know, I can move in as well. You, yeah, you're bringing some plants. <laughs> yeah. This looks good, right? Yeah. And you start hanging, like, Photoshop pictures of me and you hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> this is at the beach. I'm like, I don't remember doing that. <laughs> you know? No, we went, we went to uh, Marina Del Rey together. <laughs> But uh, anyways, I bring the story up of yeah. this chaos and I wanted to see how you in these moments of like if you've experienced these moments of chaos where like your house of cards is falling apart. Maybe you're going to a show and like your flights are canceled. Ubers are late. This is happening. Bags are lost. Yeah. Have you been yeah. in these situations where everything's falling apart? And how do you handle it? Because I know like our viewers are out there listening and th they've go through chaos. They as also well. have houses of cards. We all have our like houses of cards on like certain days, you know, and it's like everything is just being held up by like mm. a thin little card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're just like praying that all the pressure of everything else doesn't collapse. But when it does, what do you do? Do you like freak out? Do you panic? Do you like stress or do you stay calm? I think I stay. I think I stay calm. I feel like I'm just hyper logical. Mm -hmm. So when something blows up or things don't go according to plan, obviously it's not ideal. But then my initial thought is, uh, don't spin out. What do I have control over? Yeah. What are the steps that need to be taken to kind of remedy this? Yeah, yeah. And if if you can't remedy it completely, then what is the next best best option? Yeah. So it's kind of just very. Uh, I don't know, meticulous and logical about had, what to do. Have you had an experience? Probably. I'm trying to think. Like, sometimes I'll do a gig and then, uh, what was I doing? I was doing something summer. Maybe I was in New York and they were going to get a car for me. Yeah. And I'm not familiar with New York, really. And the driver, like, wasn't there. And then they would call me. And it was just like, a, and then he'd be like, I'm five minutes away. And it ended up being 10 minutes. And I had to, like, call the dispatch place. It was like this big clusterfuck. And yeah. I needed to get to my hotel. And then I just, uh, you know, I told my reps and, and then I'm like, it's not worth it. I just did an executive decision. I go, I know they got a car and they paid for it and everything, but like, I'll just get an Uber. Yeah. Like, and then cost wise, I'll figure it out after the fact. Like, I need to get to my place. Yeah. I'm not going to do this song and dance at the airport forever. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like this is what they planned, but, and I'm not going to be like, uh, I know I'm not on the hook because they fucked up. So yeah. I'm just going to do an audible. Then I'll hit them up and say, please reimburse me for the Uber. Cause, yeah. Because this dispatch company. Yeah. I mean, that's a very, that's a microcosm. That's a very like a, a nerf version of yeah. a house of cards. But yeah. Yeah. I didn't spin out. I was just like, okay, let me get home. Let me figure out a way to do it. I usually have like five minutes of like panic and oh my God, oh my God, ex my God. existentialism where I'm just yeah. like, why God? And then it's like, okay how do we figure this out, you know? And then from there, but like, I give myself enough time to like hate myself for me. Cause I'm like, everything that's happened is because of my decisions. Yeah. Poor decision-making. I think my North star. Yeah. Whenever something like that happens is what do I have control over? Yeah. I'm not going to spin out over something I don't have control over. Yeah. Like, yeah. It may suck, but I can't, I have you know, yeah. Why am I going to fret over something that is out of my realm? Mm-hmm. So whenever that shit happens, I think all you got to do is ask yourself, okay, what can I do? What do I have control over right now? Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. yeah. And that's how, you know, you kind of. Hey, you you came through, dude. You did it. Yeah. You persevered. And then uh, you're starting work on your new house of cards. <laughs> so, yeah, literally, yeah. Now I'm like, all right. You have that, the foundation of the house of cards? Yeah. So now I'm are like. Are they thick or are they still pretty plain cards? <sighs> At the moment, it starts off thick. Right. But then like. Up top. Because so many clients, you know, like I'm working with this new client now and 
I know they're not gonna, they're gonna kind of like leave things till last minute and it's like deadlines in 48 hours. And then I'm like, ah, oh, shit, I gotta build this thing real quick. Right. And like a little breeze can knock this down, you know? So, uh, Ooh, I've got something happened. Uh, I was on, <clears throat> I was on, uh, TikTok, you know? I'm yeah. not on there that much, but sometimes I'll just check in. Not anymore, which is sad. What? Me? You're, yeah, you're not on it at. Should I be on it more? Yeah, man. I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out because I had a couple stuff go viral early on and then it started waning. So yeah. then I became less passionate about the platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. Every Tenor now miss. and then I'll throw something on there. Yeah. But I was I was on TikTok and then this thing popped up. This this like kid, this guy, I mean, he was like 20, in his 20s or whatever. He has like a headset on. He's doing, Bro, this, he's, he's doing this dance. I thing. love that fucking video because he. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So he's doing that. He has like his little two squad boys. Yeah. The motivational but, warriors. But then I go, I go, this is kind of familiar. <gasps> oh. It's like the blown out audio. It's kind of like, you remember when I was doing it during quarantine? Yeah. The quarantine dance videos? Yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, this guy kind of looks familiar. So then I'm like, did he DM me? Because I'll get DM sometimes. Yeah. And I don't respond to all of them. I'm busy or. Yeah. Sometimes people want to collab or something and I, I'm just like, maybe I. I'm busy with other stuff and I don't get yeah. back. So I'm like, I think he might've hit me up. So I search his name and he hit me up like months wow. ago, maybe like a month after quarantine or yeah. he's like, I'm a huge fan of blah, blah, blah. Oh, Like I'm a dancer shit. too. I like the way you inject comedy and dancing and stuff. Oh, we should collab sometime. It'd be oh, great. Shit. And I just, I got busy. I, I read it, but I didn't respond. Yeah. And then I see the video and I'm like, oh man. Like I think he, it's very <laughs> similar, you know? Yeah. Are you flattered? Uh, cause you inspired this kid. I guess so. Yeah. Cause then Complex posted it. Yeah. And then what's funny is Michael B. Jordan commented on it. My yeah. nemesis for Ariana Grande. Fuck man. Fuck Michael B. Jordan. Can we throw up the poll that I lost? I got thirty two percent. We'll try to find it. We'll try to find it. Yeah. And then and then I just posted one of these. I go. Yeah. <laughs> one of these emojis. <laughs> and then and then he hit me up and he was like, "You you definitely inspired the headset. Definitely inspired by you." Bro. It's a gray area, man. Yeah. But I feel like it's a... You think it's an homage? Yeah. Nice. You inspired some kid to like do that. Like if you didn't do that, that video wouldn't have existed. This is true. And I love that video. Oh, I yeah? love your videos too. I, I love, you I love, bastard. I, love your video. I feel like you like that one more. Well, he had backup dancers. If you had Fuck. backup dancers... That's true. Yeah. You think that was the difference maker? That was the difference maker. Because he has two backup dancers and then every video he has a random guy in the back doing something random. Like he's like, <laughs> w like moving things or whatever, you know. Uh, but I literally have watched that video on repeat. Is there's multiple, right? It's he not just one. It's the same dance, but to multiple songs. <laughs> oh, it's the same dance. Yeah, same like choreography. But it'll, he'll like every video he'll m change the song and change what he says. One was about OnlyFans. One's about like try new things. One's about, but it's the same dance. Hmm. So. I'm like, if I ever learn a TikTok dance, it would be that. That's the one? Yeah. Why don't you learn it? <laughs> why are you putting me on the hot seat? You don't want to learn it? I do, but like, I uh, it, I mean, it's the same one over and over. So why can't you? I just got to get up and do it. I feel like I got, like, sometimes I'll have these ideas and they're just one-offs. Yeah. But if I just kept doing, if I just kept doing that, man, that could have been me. That could have been me on TikTok. Bro, that's what the Fuck. whole digital media is, is just algorithm consistency. Dude, honestly, like, uh, it's almost like algorithm over everything. Yeah. I want to get that on my on my chest, like Tupac. Yeah. Just in italics, algorithm over everything. Now, would you say over everything or just do the greater sign? Like greater. Yeah. Because I have an engineering background. Yeah. 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 It's a little. Just to let, let people know, remind them yeah. that I'm gangster, but I took heat transfer and yeah. stats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know about um, heat transfer through a semi-infinite solid. Jeez, man. I know about, um, you know super you know shit people don't dynamics. know man i forgot everything though yeah but you still knew a lot of shit that people just don't. <laughs> man i used to know so much yeah does everyone else feel like that you went to college and now you're dumb as shit like you used to know everything it's weird like you don't know anything life-wise yeah <laughs> like you know nothing yeah, yeah. streets wise yeah how the world but you, works but you know a lot of academic jargon book stuff yeah yeah now I know a lot of life stuff, but I forgot all the book stuff. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, that academic world. Dude, of... I used to know so much about different engineering stuff, like, mm. you know, like yielding stress and, yeah. you know, but, you know, tempering steel and. 
These that, are just like broad ass terms that I'm using. Yeah. How we, uh, how's the mailbag looking these Mail- days? Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Unless you got some, uh, oh, oh. <laughs> I was going to mention something, but, but let's uh, hear it. here before. No. Well, it kind of like ties into this oh, email I got. So. Okay. 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 So I'll, I'll do that. Mm. Yeah. While you pull that up, I just want to point out we had a burger the other week or the other night or oh, day. You had oh, the yeah, steak. We, yeah. And I had the we, burger. We went to that French place, yeah. that bistro. And we asked the person what was great. They said the mussels and the burger. Yeah. You remember she said the burger. She did, yeah. The burger was just a burger. It's very whatever. Yeah. I mean, it was a good burger. I want to do sketch where, uh, you know, the waiter comes by and you go, um, how, how's this? Like, how's, how's the chicken sandwich? And the waiter's like, Honestly, it's not my favorite. And you go, okay, cool. And then after when you're wrapping up and you have the toothpick, and you go, hey, can I, can I talk to you for a second? I just want to thank you for giving to me straight back there and letting me know the chicken burger wasn't that great. <laughs> and then like pretend like you're tipping him and it's just like a Smash Mouth CD. <laughs> and he's like, oh, I, I, I can't possibly. He's like, I, I want you to have it. I just want you to have it. But I just think that's such a baller move because yeah. like r- most waiters go, I every, love every, it. Everything tastes great here. Yeah. Honestly, I love everything on the menu. Yeah. But I love the rogue waiter who's like, it's actually my least favorite thing. Yeah. Like, I fucking, I love this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's almost like the scene in the movie where everyone is sucking the boss's dick, you know, just kissing his ass. And then some guy's like, I don't think we do it. And the boss is like, huh? Who is this guy? What's your name? <laughs> now sit next to me. This is my new VP. And they're like, hello, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Oh, what the guy who went against yeah that's the waiter situation so it was a very whatever burger yeah i've learned that i've become that guy just out of being a dumbass like what? just going like sometimes i've learned that it's just best to just stay quiet you know maybe be the 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 waiter that says this is everything is great i love everything here but i i need to become more of that and mm-hmm. less of the how's your shit burger it's my favorite thing on the menu yeah. honestly we use real shit, uh, locally sourced. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, I just want to bring that up that I'm tired of going to places where they're like, our f- burger is to die for. And it's just a good burger. Yeah. Like, I'm like. It's like a Carl's Jr. burger. Yeah. I'm not going to die. I'm not like craving to come back. But yeah. All right. Mailbag. Mailbag. This is from Jade Johnson. Subject heading, blind dates. Oh. Have either of you been on a blind date? If so, was it awful, just okay, or really great? I don't think I've ever been on a blind date. Neither have I. Does anybody do that? Nah. Does that exist anymore? Like, why would you go on a date where you have no idea? I think you would. The only blind dates are like little literal blind people. (laughs) I think friends would do that for one another. To be like, I want you to meet this girl. Just meet her. Really? Blah, blah, blah. I don't think it's as common as it Who was maybe the in the nineties. Maybe it's not as common as in the nineties. Because yeah. now it's like just send me her if Instagram it was, if link. It was like the Victorian era. Or yeah. do you think they were like, show me a painting? No, I think Yeah, all right. I think the eighties and nineties was a thing. You know? Blind dates? Yeah. I know it was a TV show. I know that maybe but that's where they do it in practice. An idea. I, I wasn't old any, enough. I don't know. Yeah. But one thing I do hate. I hate this more than anything is when someone's like, bro, I got someone in mind for you. Same. And I, at this point, I'm just like, no. I, I'm i always like, no, but send the picture anyway, but no. I'm curious. I do have this thought, like, I have two thoughts on this. Number one, when they say, I have, I want you to meet so-and-so, it's nice. Yeah. It's, you know, the thought is nice, but then part of me is like, if, if I, I don't like soiling two relationships, obviously I want it to go well, yeah. but- relationship me or what i do in that arena i don't want that to affect existing friendships i have yeah yeah so because whatever happens here they talk yeah in my idiosyncrasies or whatever i don't need that bleeding out to this new party yeah i like having clean separation of worlds exactly and that just bleeds in yeah and it's no bueno yeah yeah unless you get married then it was great yeah. you'd be like they set us up yeah but if it goes south it's, it's weird all your business is out there. all your business is out there yeah i don't need that yeah and then the other thought is Sometimes when someone says, oh, uh, like, oh, I want you to meet so-and-so. And then they show you the picture. And then you kind of, it's like kind of whatever, let's say. Yeah. You get to find out who. They think you. Who yeah. they're better friends with. Yeah. 
because if you are the less attractive person, um, they like you more because they're trying to get you up. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's an interesting thought. Yeah. Like whoever the least attractive person is in, in like the setting up. Yeah. The mutual party likes that person better. Yeah. Because if you love this person the most, you're not going to set them up with someone like, like super ugly yeah. or like uglier than you. Yeah. You yeah. Know? yeah. I, at this point, any time that comes up, I'm first thing. No, I'm not interested. Mm-hmm. I have someone for you. Nah, but it's on the picture anyway, but it's still no, but I'm just curious, but it's going to be a no. You know what it is? You go, uh, no, but I'm just curious. And if it was just like, <laughs> like Jessica Rabbit or some yeah. shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, that's my go to. You find out I'm a freak. You know, it was like, you know, Jessica Rabbit. Like a Lola like, Bunny. Like an animated. <laughs> yeah. It was the only thing my Roger Rabbit's of. wife. <laughs> <laughs> She's human. Yeah, that's that a weird one. Rabbit. I could have said like Kate Upton or anything. Yeah. But I, I went Jessica Rabbit, a thing that doesn't even exist. Yeah. Um, then you might be like, well, man, I could make some. I feel like everyone bends the rules. Yeah. Like some people have the rule, they go, I don't date comics. Well, I honestly don't date comics. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, but and I'm steadfast about that. Like, but there are there are like some younger comics who say they don't date comics, and I think they need to make a modification to that statement. They say they don't they don't date comics unless they are uh, bigger than them. Nah, makes sense. You don't. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, what yeah. I mean. You don't want to meet oh, like with someone it, on your <clears throat> same level. Yeah, if some guys like I don't I don't date comics. And then Sarah Silverman is into him. He's dating Sarah Silverman. Yeah. His rule goes out the window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, ha- I have that. I wouldn't call that a rule, but I'm not someone with not in my industry. Yeah. I, I, oh, you don't want someone in your industry? Yeah, like in entertain or film, just film. Yeah. That makes sense. sense. You know, it's just. Because then it's like you're just talking about work all, all the, time. the time. Yeah. Yeah. And anyway, but. Uh, um, but I, I was on that show Disaster Date. I remember that, yeah. And that was, I wonder if clips exist. They, they, do. they do. They're back I in the see day. Them. You really? Yeah. Oh, okay. So I was, some other comedian asked me to do something for them and I, I was looking them up and I they saw- They were on Disaster? Yeah. Hassan was on there. Yeah, yeah, he was on it. And I saw their entire Disaster Date thing and when I clicked on it, it was like, I saw your like recommended thing. Mm. I don't know if you uploaded it or someone else did or- Yeah. It no. was up there. All right. But yeah. But that was, I guess, the closest I got to pl- blind dates. Yeah. Even though they were for a show, yeah. I'm, it's like I'm still on the date. It was fascinating. It was like almost a social experiment because I wasn't dating a lot. Um, I just never grew up dating a ton. So yeah. that was like a crash. I would have so many dates and I was supposed to be bad yeah. on these dates. Like they give you a character flaw to have and they yeah. tell you all the things they hate yeah. on the date. So you obviously do those things. Yeah. And that would be interesting just... That wasn't blind. I think I would see a picture of them, but I was p- pretty fresh. I didn't really know them at all. So yeah. that was the closest I got to blind dating, even though it was for a show. Mm. But what was interesting is sometimes I would I would have to be an asshole um, on the date. Yeah. Or just be this like outlandish character who's doing like dumb things. Yeah. But they were like super into it. Some girls like I would be the worst. Yeah. I'd be the worst. Like I would do things I would never do. Yeah. As me on the date. And it was like charming to them. Oh or they, and it was just fascinating just as a guy interesting without that knowledge i'm just like oh it's almost like you could be the biggest asshole in the world but if you just have the confidence yeah it works yeah yeah so that was interesting that that's as much as i've gone into that world yeah i think one time one or two times they wanted to like date after the show oh wow and i'm like i had a rule i go that's too weird for me yeah i don't want to do that that feels you know, it's like dating Truman after Truman Show or something. Yeah. You know? You're on a headset and you're like manipulating this guy's life. Yeah. And he's like, I still want to go on a real date. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a very odd thing. All right. This this is the tie into the thing I was going to say earlier. Okay. All right. This is from David. No last name. All right. Let's keep, keep it off the grid. Oh. Subject. You had a huge shout out from the biggest German comedian right now. Whoa. Yeah. All right. Hey, Fahim and Ali. Nice podcast. Fahim, you just had a huge shout out from Felix uh, Lobricht. I don't know how to say the German last names. Sorry, sorry, Felix. Uh, 850K followers, the best comedian in Germany right now. Even won the award for it from his podcast. Uh, oh, man, I can't say it. Jimmy, C- oh my God. Jimmy, C- well, here, do you know how to speak German? Nah, let me see. This- 
<laughs> That's a tough one. All right. Yeah. yeah Felix no. is okay. What was uh, his name? Felix? Felix Lobrecht. Oh. It's L O B R E C H T. Okay, I, I, see, I see him. Um, Ooh. So I guess it's called, like, translated, his podcast means mixed mince. Mixed minced meat. Ooh. Most popular podcast in Germany with over 1 million streams per podcast. Damn. He said he loved your free stand up on YouTube and more. Whoa. Uh, I personally discovered you earlier and loved it too. Keep going. I would love to see more. David. P.S. Do a show in Germany someday. This guy looks like Diplo. I could see that. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. I noticed I was getting like a bunch of German followers. <laughs> like they started rolling in on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, that's interesting. Like they're they're all from Germany. And then someone DM'd me and they go, Yo, you know, Felix, he give you a shout out on his podcast. And it's just so random to me, you know what I mean? And I yeah. look at his account and I'm like, Oh, he's pretty big. Yeah. You forget how big the world is. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm just so concentrated on LA comedy or yeah. even New York or just the US. But this guy, you know, he's almost has a million followers and it's like huge arenas and stuff, or just huge crowds in Germany, pre COVID, obviously. <clears throat> and I'm like, oh my god! So then I hit him up. I'm like, yo, I heard you give me a shout out. Thanks, yeah. dude. And I'm like, I'm just curious, like, how did you find out or yeah, come across? Yeah. And then he goes, you were doing Amsterdam. He goes, my opener saw you in Amsterdam. He's a comedian. Yeah. Here, I want to get his name right because I do remember um, him coming out to see me. And I, you know, I talked to people after the show and stuff. And yeah, I think he he came from Germany to see me, or was. I forgot where he was, but he came a little distance to come see me out in Amsterdam because I'm like never out there. Oh, wow. Um, here, I want to get his name right. So his opener is uh, Kawas, uh, Kawu. <laughs> oh, man. Fuck. Hey, man. So bad. Hold on. Kawas Kalanter. Okay. Yeah. Kawas Kalanter. So he came, saw the show. We were talking afterwards. He's like, yeah, I do stand up too. And I'm like, oh, that's so cool. So we're talking about comedy and all that and what it's like out there in Europe. Yeah. And I thought nothing of it, and and then I find out, you know, just the world is just it's a big and small place at the same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but he's like, yeah, he showed me your stuff, and oh, that's incredible. Yeah, so that's really cool. I'm like, let me know anytime you're in LA, and yeah. So thanks for the shout out. Um, have him come by. Have him come by. Do the, the pod. Tower. I would love to have him do the pod if he's in LA. Yeah. I would Ooh. love to know what comedy's like in Germany and the aesthetic. The scene, and yeah. I wonder when it even started. Like, has it been around for a while? Because stand up is such a U.S. specific yeah art form um yeah other countries i know it's big in mexico now like india it's really big yeah yeah but they had later starts to stand up yeah so that was a cool little development i'm, I'm big in germany guys i'm like i'm like david hasselhoff <laughs> he needs to watch out dude watch out david hasselhoff you're gonna be replaced yeah all right so there's that and then all right i think we got one more email here we go this Ooh. is from ben davis Subject heading, Gravestone. Hi, guys. Long time, no email. Glad you're back to regular episodes. Thank you. Before my question, I wanted to give you both props for really being vulnerable about failure. You've both been open about failure and have normalized it, which shows the grit and resilience you've both had and hopefully helps others. Thanks for doing that. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'm glad we resonated with somebody. Yeah. At yeah. least one listener. I don't know if I was being vulnerable. I was just telling the truth. <laughs> I wasn't trying to be vulnerable. I was just I guess maybe, pulling back the curtain and just letting you know. I think a lot of people just want to share their successes and mm -hmm. not about how they handle failure and I guess how often so. it is. Yeah. I guess that is sort of the byproduct of Hollywood. There is so much fake it till you make it yeah. or just like I'm crushing it all yeah. the time. No one is crushing it. Even the biggest people are never crushing it. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot who had. I think there's this video on YouTube. Brie Larson is talking about all the things she didn't get. Yeah. And these are like mega movies. And she's pretty big. Yeah, yeah. So it's refreshing to know that even people at the top level yeah. are are striking out as well. Yeah. And it's just the nature of the business they're in or yeah. life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So question. He mentioned previously sending in his curated five-minute reel for his SNL audition. If you both had to select one piece of work to be known for or have displayed on your gravestone, what would it be? For Fahim, this would be a joke and or sketch. And for Ali, it would be a film or video. Mm. Stay well, guys. Mm. On my gravestone? On your gravestone. I don't think anything that I've done yet. I have a on few projects that I've been working on, like writing 
and I'm planning to shoot in the next couple months. So I think maybe I'll, I'll put that on there. But nothing that I've done in the past where I'm like, if I die, this needs to be my, you know, unfortunately. Yeah. It's so hard to pick like one thing. Yeah. Like one joke or one sketch. I guess I like that dancing for help sketch. I like that. Just anything that combines uh, all of my loves. Yeah. Like music, dancing, smart writing. Mm -hmm. and, and like, yeah. Yeah. So maybe, maybe that. That's just me thinking off the top of my head. And then joke. What was it? Um Dirty breaking or breaking? I like dirty, dirty breaking too. That was with Melissa, yeah. Melissa Villasenor, because that was just like I also love genre parody, just really matching uh, almost a feeling. Sometimes my sketches, I just want to recreate like a vibe or a feeling. It's less about the words being said. You're just like, oh, this feels familiar. Yeah, it's almost like a subtle cliche, like a take on a subtle cliche. And dirty, dirty breaking. Break the look the music the look the feel yeah like that was just as much of a joke as the words yeah so anything like that kind of um you know who else is good at doing that brent weinbach i love brent weinbach if anyone doesn't know who brent is just look up his stuff i did this one short film with him called i don't dance hmm. i think it's on vimeo but he did the gangster hotline okay the gangster like, yeah, yeah you know we and then um he has this david blaine one he just has a really funny just space comedy brain as well yeah so check out brent weinbach um joke wise i don't know what i would put in there maybe something that like again combines the different elements like something absurd but has some social commentary and sort of doing what hassan does but in an absurd way yeah like maybe i don't know maybe the jersey bit from my special <laughs> with the like being being a minority oh, well, it's like having an away jersey you can never take off that was funny yeah um yeah something like really concise kind of poignant jokes i yeah, like yeah. that so i guess that's my answer but on a grander scale i would say early in my stand-up career i was always like oh i have no footprint or i guess the worry is when you haven't had any success or anything you go uh like if i die i have no footprint or i haven't gotten the thing that i wanted yeah. or i have no legacy or i have no stamp yeah but I think the stand-up special and the goat face sketch special. Yeah. I think that's very cool. I'm very content with that. Yeah. yeah like yeah. I have a stamp with stand-up. I have a stamp with sketch. Yeah. Everything else is icing. I got to do my loves. They're official. They're like professional and stuff. And it's a sense of what I am. And then, and then also social media has been around for long enough where I think I have enough little pieces of me and everything. Yeah where i feel like uh if i were to die or there's parish you know like there's enough of my you know of me out there to get a sense of what i did or yeah yeah maybe made enough enough of an impact just in terms of comedy and bringing light to the world <laughs> or i don't know you just want to feel like you've done something you've made a con you're on the timeline yeah of the thing you love yeah and you've made a contribution yeah i feel you i feel you I'm just playing with house money now, man. Everything else is icing. That's These true. rooftop shows in Anaheim. Yeah. It's just icing, baby. That's it, man. That's, that's amazing. That's all I got for you. All right. That's the mailbag. That's a lot of shit on my gravestone. It's going to be a lot. big ass gravestone. It will be, man. It's going to be like a building. All right. All Can right. We well, tune? that's that. Oh, hold on. We got to tell people, you know, rate, review. Oh, rate, review. All that stuff. Yes. Thumbs up. Comment. Uh, stars it subscribe right yeah subscribe oh, well we're gonna have a new youtube channel as well yes we're gonna have a clips channel we're working it's coming. on it it's coming i think it's gonna be youtube.com slash fahim anwar dance hour yeah what you're watching right now it's fahim what about anwar. that site you're showing me is that oh, something we have merch okay there we go we have merch guys drum roll we have <laughs> we'd like to do the drum roll <laughs> after <laughs> the reveal <laughs> It's sort of like when you go it's a boy and then pop the balloon yeah then you tell the reveal <laughs> it's a boy <laughs> And then it's blue confetti. Yeah. So yeah, we have merch. We have a new merchandise website. Yeah. So if you go to fahimanor.com and then click on the merch tab, we have white dance hour tees and black dance hour tees. And I think we have mugs. And we got a hoodie. And we got a hoodie. I'm going to start rocking the hoodie. Ooh, me too. Winter time, fall time's oh, coming yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. You know. Um, yeah, so check that out. We're starting small with that stuff and then we'll build it out. But right now there's some stuff up there. So if you're, you want to support the pod, rock the dance hour. 
If you get it, send a picture in. We'll Ooh. show you. We'll throw you up, man. We'll throw you up, we'll on throw the, you up. We'll throw you up on the YouTube. You'll be the dance hour models. That's actually pretty dope. I think it's pretty dope. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, this track. Yeah, what are we dancing out to? You ready, bro? Yeah. All right. This track, guys, is called Average Joe, and it's by Oscar Scheller. And I'm a fan. All right. I'm all ready right. to build a sweat dancing through this. Yeah. We're going to go join our dancers in the other room. <laughs> They're still dancing. <laughs> yeah. Peace. All right. See you guys.